Beyond the Badge is brought to you by Stefan Cadolin of Coldwell Banker Burnett Realty. and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund. Welcome to Beyond the Badge, a program about the inner workings of the Edina Police Department. Thanks for joining us. I'm Officer Brian Hubbard. A man suspected of multiple armed robberies in the metro area is in jail, thanks in part to a cash reward offered by the Edina Crime Prevention Fund. 20-year-old Dane Robert Nelson is charged with robbing the Edina Market on Amundsen Avenue at gunpoint on December 1st. Surveillance video also linked the man to a number of similar robberies that took place in the metro area last year. In December, Edina police officers released footage from the Edina robbery and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund offered a $5,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. Four calls came in identifying Nelson, a 2008 Edina High School graduate who was living in Albert Lee. He was arrested soon after. It's time proven that money talks. Anytime you offer up money, you tend to get tips. They're, they may not be correct, but you're going to get people that are going to begin to talk. And we've solved all sorts of uh, big or uh, large crimes in Edina by offering up money from the Edina Crime Prevention Fund. Surveillance footage shows the suspect wearing a jacket with a unique company logo during many of the robberies, including the one at the Edina Market. Officers say Nelson was wearing a jacket with the logo removed at the time of his arrest. A black replica firearm was also found in his vehicle. Since we had the decent video surveillance, we knew that there were multiple robberies. Uh, putting out the uh, reward fund seemed to be the next, lo next logical step in order to stop it because it seemed like it was escalating. Nelson has been charged with seven counts of aggravated robbery in two counties. The robberies occurred in Edina, Bloomington, Minneapolis, Richfield, and South St. Paul. Edina police are also investigating an armed robbery that occurred at Edible Arrangements in late December. A man entered the store in the 5800 block of Lincoln Drive just as an employee was preparing to close for the night. The suspect, described as a black male between 20 and 30 years old, approximately 5 foot 9 and weighing 185 pounds, approached the employee with what appeared to be a small black handgun. He came to the counter and demanded money and a personal cell phone. Thankfully, no one was injured. Another robbery by a man with a similar description took place in Richfield 20 minutes later. They had a mask on, they wore gloves, there wasn't any forensic evidence collected. So what we're doing is working with the multiple other agencies where the other robberies occurred, hoping that we can link our case in with the other ones. Anyone with information about the robbery should contact Detective Dave Carlson at 952-826-1610. Even though 2010 ended with two robberies, overall robbery was down in the city last year. There were only five robberies reported in 2010 compared to 14 in 2009. Edina's ambulance service boasts some of the fastest response times in the state. Still, many times it is a police officer who is the first to arrive on the scene of a medical emergency. Edina 16's Marty Dahl has the story on how these officers can sometimes mean the difference between life and death. 911 emergency. Every year, Edina's 911 dispatchers receive over 4,000 medical calls. 104164, you can clear. Many involving cardiac arrests. It's the first couple minutes that make a big difference. Edina police officer Kevin Rafadal knows that it's critical for heart attack victims to get immediate care. <laughs> which sometimes falls on the shoulders of Edina's police officers until paramedics can arrive on the scene. Oftentimes if you call 911 there might be a police officer around the corner. We might be just a few minutes away but we're out on the street as opposed to responding from the office. He says there is one particular piece of equipment that officers carry that can literally be a lifesaver. We've had the automatic external defibrillators for probably 10, 12 years. An automated external defibrillator, or AED, is a portable electronic device that is able to automatically diagnose and treat an arresting heart. We open it up, there's different pads right here all ready to go. We take them out and the pads themselves will have uh, diagrams on here exactly where to put them. AED or electricity from AED is what really saves a person in cardiac arrest. According to Edina Fire Chief and paramedic Marty Shear, 
CPR will provide blood and oxygen to the vital organs of a heart attack victim. Stay clear, shocking. But an electric shock from an AED is needed to get the heart back on track. It actually stops the heart, gets the heart started again, and when it gets started again, it generally goes back to a, a normal rhythm. We started with just a few of them in a few cars, now we've got them in, in all of them. They're a little uh, better technology than they used to be, a little more compact, lighter weight. Rafidal says these AEDs are saving more lives than ever before. It used to be when I started in this job, uh, you might save somebody and they might uh, never recover well enough to leave a hospital or a nursing home or something like that. Now all of a sudden with the, the type of work that we're doing, we're seeing these people walking out of the hospital uh, in just uh, you know, a week or two later and sometimes even sooner. I had no idea what happened. Case in point, last fall, hockey referee Kevin Whipple collapsed to the ice at Edina's Braemar Arena and was saved by quick thinking and an AED. When we shocked him, he pretty much came back instantly. Justin Johnson, an EMT with the Minneapolis Fire Department, used the arena's defibrillator to save Whipple's life. There's a, a window of just a few minutes in, until that heart is totally stopped, and that's that window that we're trying for. We need more of these things around and in public places and uh, more people trained in CPR so that they know what to do in this kind of circumstance. Whipple made a full recovery in just a few days, a living example of the power and simplicity of AEDs. Very simple, it tells you when to shock or when not to shock. Uh, you really almost can't go wrong with these things. In addition to being carried in Edina squad cars, AEDs are found in a number of public buildings throughout the community. The difficulty, officials say, is getting people to use them. Every single question you just ask them, based on their answers, is what pops up next. Edina's dispatchers, who are trained to talk people through a variety of situations, is what it's telling you. Say all it takes is a little confidence. With the programs we have here, it's really so simple because it walks us through step by step on what we need to pass along to the caller. We're getting help to them just that much quicker and obviously the ambulance is en route at that same time. Using a technique known as emergency medical dispatching, dispatchers work through a series of computer screens, asking questions and providing callers with simple instructions, such as how to perform CPR or how to use an AED. You know, CPR is obviously the big one, but there are many others as far as emergency medical dispatching. The information they provide and gather not only helps the victim, but also the officers on scene. All the officers are, are emergency medical technicians, EMTs in Edina. We work with the paramedics real closely. Edina is one of the only cities around that have paramedics also. So when you, when you combine it all together, it makes a pretty good uh, uh, package. That package, according to both Rafidal and Shear, is what has helped Edina be recognized for their fast response times and have a high rate of success. The technology's gotten a lot better that with the medicine, and we're seeing more and more people saved than we ever have before. With Steve Christensen, I'm Marty Dahl, Edina 16. According to the American Heart Association, a person's chance of surviving a heart attack is reduced by 7 to 10 percent with every minute that passes without CPR and defibrillation. They say immediate CPR can double or even triple a cardiac arrest victim's chance of survival. Like AEDs, speed and traffic laser equipment are standard in Edina's police cars. Let's go out in the field where Aaron White is with police officer Keith Berger, who will demonstrate the department's LIDAR guns in this episode segment of How's It Work? Thanks, Brian. I think today is a good day to be in the studio because I am out on Xerxes Avenue in Edina for another installment of How's It Work? And today I'm joined by officer Keith Berger. Keith, thanks for being here. Thank you, Aaron. Keith's a member of our traffic unit, focusing yep. exclusively on traffic enforcement, uh, a favorite of uh, motorists in the Edina area, I'm sure. <laughs> Number uh, one complaint. Well, this segment is all about some of the equipment and the uh, devices and the technology that we use behind the scenes. And today you're going to introduce us to uh, LIDAR, or what we would call the laser uh, speed detection device. I am, yes. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about it? Well, each one of our black and white patrol cars and our traffic cars are issued what's called a, light, a LIDAR unit or laser unit is what it's commonly called. And basically it's another speed detection device that we use instead of radar. We use LIDAR or laser in high traffic areas where we can signal out specific vehicles. Sure. High traffic areas, it's hard to do that with the radar. Okay, so it's a little bit more accurate. You yes. can look at a specific vehicle speed? Very, very, much more accurate. Okay. Can you give us a little demonstration out here on Xerxes Avenue, uh, measure the speed of a vehicle here? Yes. I will, I'll first turn on the machine. Every day we check the machine 
uh, against known standards. We have to do a fixed distance test, and we have basically shoot at two different distances that are fixed. Sure. So our testing range is 52 feet and 109 feet. So I make sure that my distance is on each day. And then inside this little hood right here is a little red dot. Okay. And then I make sure that dot is in alignment so that that dot is the car I'm picking up and okay. not the car next to it. Sure. And it's on, it's already done, it's testing, so I'll go ahead and start picking up cars. Okay, why don't you show us? It's basically point and shoot. Inside this hood here is a red light pointing at a car. I'll pull a trigger and I'll get a speed and my trigger's right here. Okay. So you use the sight on top to pick a specific vehicle out of the crowd yep. versus with radar where you're looking at kind of a broader field of view. Correct. And then this, this heads up display has a clear lens on it so I can see which car that dot is on and when I take my laser off my face I can still see that car. Okay. So another tool you use to do your job. Yes. And uh, sounds like a very accurate and fast one. Very accurate, so, very fast. Very good. Well, Keith, thanks for giving us a quick introduction to laser speed detection today. Appreciate you. you coming out in the cold. I guess it's kind of your nature. You got to work in this stuff. So. Yes. But we'll get back inside and we'll uh, return to Brian back in the studio. They called it the Battle of the Badges. Police and fire departments in metro communities competing against each other to see which could solicit the most blood donations in the Twin Cities. In January, the Memorial Blood Centers held a competitive blood drive to help fill the constant need for donated blood in our area. Departments were asked to encourage people to donate blood. Each donor could vote for his or her favorite police or fire department. The department with the most votes was declared the winner. As of airtime, this year's winner had not yet been announced. Statistics show that one out of every three people will need blood at some time in his or her life. Edina Police Officer Mike Blood needed 15 gallons of donated blood to recover after being shot in the line of duty in 2000. Well, we're really pleased that the City of Edina is participating in the Battle of the Badges this year, and officers do save lives every day, but with this challenge, Battle of the Badges, every time someone donates in honor of Battle of the Badges, a unit of blood will save up to three lives. So they're contributing even more to the community, and so can every other resident of the city. If you didn't participate in the Battle of the Badges, it's never too late to donate. Call 651-332-7150 for an appointment or visit www.mbc.org to find a donation center near you. You may save someone's life. In each episode of Beyond the Badge, we take an in-depth look at different ways viewers can protect themselves from crime. This month, we're giving you some personal safety tips which are especially important during the long winter days. When walking or driving, use safe, direct, and well-lit routes. Always stay alert to your surroundings. Using your phone or MP3 player can decrease your awareness. Look confident and purposeful, and walk with a friend if possible, particularly at night. If you are being followed, go somewhere there are people and call 911. Carry your keys and money in a pocket, not in a purse or backpack. Keep doors and windows locked, and never keep doors propped open. This compromises the safety of everyone in your building. Put valuables and packages in the trunk of your car before you arrive at your destination. Finally, don't leave your car running unattended. Turn it off and take your keys. The Edina Police Department works closely with a number of law enforcement agencies. Let's go back to Officer White, who is with Sheriff Rich Stanick at the Hennepin County Jail to tell us about how the Sheriff's Office serves our community. Thank you, Brian. Today I'm at the Hennepin County Jail, and my guest is Hennepin County Sheriff Richard Stanick. Sheriff, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Appreciate your time, and uh, the purpose of our visit today is we want to learn a little bit more about you and uh, also the role of your office here in Hennepin County. And um, it sounds like uh, your background is mostly that of a police officer. Correct. Well, I have uh, 25 years with Minneapolis Police. I uh, worked my way up through the ranks here, eventually commanding a, a precinct on the east side of Minneapolis. I had a chance to serve five terms in the Minnesota State Legislature representing northwestern Hennepin County. And then uh, I served a couple years working for Governor Palente as his Commissioner of Public Safety and Director of Homeland Security before being elected sheriff uh, in 2006. Well, out in Edina, most uh, folks are familiar with uh, law enforcement, mainly uh, looking like me, wearing the Edina police uniform. And a lot of people uh, maybe see you on television, hear references to the sheriff's office, maybe even see some of your brown cars running around, uh, but maybe don't really understand what it is you guys do. Now, here today we're in the jail. That's a huge part of your operation, isn't it? Correct. Well, uh, the, the setting for this program is the Hennepin County Public Safety Facility, a.k.a 
the jail. The jail. Now, this jail is an 839-bed facility. We book approximately 40,000 people a year through the front doors here. A number of them are repeat offenders, upwards of 70%. Uh, uh, you're right, though, in terms of, I get this question all the time, you know what's the difference, Sheriff, between local law enforcement, whether they live in Edina or one of the other suburbs of Hennepin County, or the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office? Uh, the difference is simply this. Now, Hennepin County Sheriff's Office deputies wear light brown uniforms. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all have the same job. Uh, we all perform different functions, but all towards the same goal of providing public safety services back to the public. And one of the things uh, that I understand that you're trying to do in your role is to help kind of bridge some of those uh, divides with some information sharing and some task forces uh, made up of um, various representatives of different agencies. Talk about those initiatives a little bit. Sure. Well, the key role of a uh, countywide sheriff's office is the uh, sheriff is the chief law enforcement officer of the county. What that really means at the end of the day to your residents is that we work in collaboration with the local law enforcement agencies across this county. Hennepin County is a pretty big place as your residents now. There's 47 different municipalities. 37 of them, like Edina, have their own localized police departments. Now, when I came in as sheriff back in 2006, uh, our strategic focus was on reducing violent crime across this county, working with the local agencies like Edina Police, as well as our federal uh, law enforcement agencies, really to strengthen the partnerships, to use technology and resources to our advantage to reduce violent crime across this county. Sure. You also uh, have a number of maybe smaller divisions that play a very important role, but I, I know uh, you guys have really expanded in the area of crime laboratory services, and that's important in Edina. How has that expanded in the last few years? Correct. Well, the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office provides eight distinct lines of business. Uh, most local agencies provide three or four distinct lines of business. The ones that we provide, such as the jail, the crime lab, warrant service, civil process, now, we provide that as a primary function. When a city has a localized police department, if they want to provide those additional services like 911 dispatch, uh, answering 911 calls, um, investigation of crimes, uh, they're happy to do that. And then the Sheriff's Office provides either support services to that or helps coordinate multi-jurisdictional investigations sure. across jurisdictional boundaries. Specifically with the crime lab, we've invested over the last four years, we've doubled the size of the crime lab in terms of personnel and resources. Just in the last year or so, we brought in over a million dollars in federal grants to help with the DNA backlog. Uh, we encourage local communities like Edina to submit DNA for testing and processing to the Sheriff's Office Crime Lab. And we've had some great success stories just out of Edina itself. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of evolution uh, from fingerprints to just surfaces being touched. Where is that going with DNA? <laughs> Where are you guys at with your ability to, uh, to process that? That's a hot item. Everybody sees the crime shows. DNA is all the rage. Where are you guys at with Correct. that? Well, we're a lot like uh, CSI, what you see on TV, but we can't solve a crime in 44 minutes or less sure. with commercials. But nonetheless, we're very good at what we do, but we couldn't do it without the cooperation of local law enforcement. When your officers get out to the scene of a burglary or out to the scene of a robbery, a lot of times they'll take a look around, see what's there, and then they'll call the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office Crime Lab text to help collect the evidence submit it to the lab for analysis. Very good, and uh, a lot of kind of centralized services uh, you guys are providing that really do reach out and touch the residents of Edina. You also uh, use a lot of volunteers. Um, talk about some of your volunteer programs. Correct. In fact, Aaron, you were just telling me when we started the beginning of this that you used to be one of our water patrol volunteers. And you know, truly there's about 125 men and women across this county, uh, much like the reserve officers in Edina who are trained to, uh, to a high degree. Uh, and they volunteer their services back to their local communities or to Hennepin County. We have 125 special deputies in Hennepin County. We give them some limited statutory authority so they can do what they need to do. Uh, no pension, no stipend, uh, no reimbursement, uh, but rather they do this as an act of uh, public service. And they operate in four primary areas. Our mobile amateur radio corps, our water patrol, our mounted patrol by horseback, and then our emergency squad who's out on the roads every day helping the local communities with whatever situation arises. Sounds like you got your work cut out for you. We've got a lot of work, but we truly enjoy what we do every day. And you know, your residents, when they look and see uh, squads out on the highway, out on the roadways, whether it's brown uniform, blue uniform, maroon uniform, you know, what they need to know is that we all work in tandem together. We share the information as it comes in. Sure. And our job, first and foremost, is to provide public safety services to the residents. Very good. Well, Sheriff Stanick, we appreciate your time today and sharing a little bit about what it is you guys do at the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office. Thank you. My pleasure.
Okay. Sheriff Rich Stanick just elected to his second term here in Hennepin County, and we'll return to Brian in the studio. Even though the calendar shows we're in the final stretch of winter, there are still several weeks of possible snow and ice ahead. Many Minnesotans have made the mistake of parking their cars or trucks on the street during a snowstorm, only to find later that their vehicles have been buried or plowed in. A parking ticket on your windshield can only add to the frustration. To avoid a citation or tow, do not park on any city street or in any alley between 1 and 6 a.m. from now until April 1st. Do not park on a street or in an alley when one and a half inches or more of snow has fallen until it has been plowed to the curb line. Finally, do not park on the street or in an alley for six hours after a snowfall stops. It is extremely important for residents to keep their vehicles off of the roadways during these times. Cars parked on the street make it difficult for snow plow operators to maneuver and also prevent the streets from being thoroughly plowed. By parking in driveways or lots, you'll avoid being plowed in and dealing with the expense and inconvenience associated with parking tickets and towing. The Edina Public Works Department's snowplow fleet has been out in force keeping our roadways safe again this winter. Driving too close to snow removal equipment can be extremely dangerous. Make sure to yield to snowplows. They travel slower than posted speeds. Give snowplow drivers plenty of room to do their jobs. Never drive in a snow cloud. Slow down. Never use cruise control on wet or icy roads. Stay alert. A snowplow weighs 17 times more than a car. In a crash, people in a car are much more likely to be seriously injured. Be patient. Follow at a safe distance. Allow at least five car lengths between your vehicle and a snowplow. If you have children, do not allow them to play or build snow forts or tunnels near the road. Children could be buried or injured when the snowplow comes by since drivers aren't able to see children inside the forts. We recommend the, you know, the kids uh, build a fort maybe 30, 40 feet back from the road with an open top so there isn't that potential for a cave-in. Um, again, the threat with the forts that are down by the road is the uh, snow wake that comes off these plows. So we're talking several, several hundred pounds of snow. On behalf of my co-host, Officer Aaron White, and the rest of the officers of the Edina Police Department, thanks for tuning in to learn a little bit more of what goes on beyond the badge. Stay safe this winter. Beyond the Badge is brought to you by Stefan Kalorin of Coldwell Banker Burnett Realty and the Edina Crime Prevention Fund.